Super Tuesday. On Tuesdays, it's super here on Digital Charcuterie. Joining me today is Rob McDonald, a.k.a. Darth Ward. Rob, what's up? Oh. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you are a huge fan of Jurassic World Dominion. You called me on the weekend and you said, James, if you're going to go see one movie this summer, go see Jurassic World Dominion. I have not seen it yet i might go tonight i might not we don't know i'm a huge fan of locust so i'm thinking about seeing it but you you went to go see it and you and you told me one thing that i did not think was possible after i saw jurassic world fall in order several years ago you said this movie is worse and i don't i actually don't believe you and that's why i have to go see this movie or i'm going to watch this movie because i do not believe that anything could be worse then Fallen Order. Or Fallen... I, uh, hey, what's it called? Fallen, Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> whatever it's called. I assume that was just a joke. <laughs> um, I don't even know the name of them. <laughs> yeah. Fallen Kingdom. Uh, no, yeah. Um, yeah, th this, uh, I did not like Dominion at all. I, uh, I at least thought that Fallen Kingdom had some moments where it was great. You know, like... I, I, I don't know if there was a real great moment in uh, Dominion at all. So it did not work for me. Uh, the, like, like you alluded to, the movie isn't about the dinosaurs. It's about locusts, which pissed me the hell off. So uh, yeah, even, uh, like, even Lex, even Lex hates it. He's a, he's a, he's a, <laughs> he's whining gone. through the door. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, my problem with the whole, Jurassic World half of of these movies is they're like we have dinosaurs. Ah, screw it. Let's just make these random monster movies and like I didn't I didn't like I like they created dinosaurs fine and then they were like that's not good enough. Let's hybrid a dinosaur. I wasn't. I'm not. I've never been into that and I really didn't like where they took it in Fallen Kingdom. But, so but let's just be honest. Like the, this this part of the franchise, these three movies are called Jurassic World. And now you're finally delivering on that promise with this movie because all the dinosaurs are yeah. out in the actual world, yet you don't make it about that. So that's especially what pissed me off. Yeah. So. I, anyway, we won't get into it. I think this yeah, franchise sorry. took a turn for the worst. <laughs> I, I didn't. I wasn't a huge fan of. I, I wasn't a huge fan of World. I thought World was fun, but it was missing a lot, and it just it felt very weak, and it felt like it was trying very hard, and I was very just, I was very, people loved it so much, and I was so disappointed by it, but I love dinosaurs, so I keep going back to these to these movies, but anyway, let's go on superhero stuff. We're going to talk some Joker 2, and we're going to talk some Batman Court of Owls. Let's start with the Court of Owls, Rob. You're a big Batman fan. You like the Batman by Matt Matthew Reeves. Uh, you you own it on the steel books, I believe. You have a steel book copy of it. Sequel is coming. It's been greenlit. They announced it. I, I, it's kind of a lame duck announcement because nothing like there's nothing factual. Like I don't even know if they start writing it yet. They probably have now, but you know they just announced it because yeah, of course they're going to make it. The thing almost made a billion dollars. Of course they're going to make it. But a lot of speculation, a lot of talk before the Batman came out was on the Court of Owls. You know, you like the Court of Owls. You are a Court of Owls fan, I believe. So can you tell us a little bit of Court of Owls, about the Court of Owls, and how do you think they will fit in to a second The Batman movie? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, the first Batman, the Batman movie, as you said, I loved it quite a bit, and they set it up quite well uh to have the court of owls in it like there were several moments that were just like already hinting at the fact that the court of owls exists in this uh universe in some way and it's like you know the, the court of owls in general as like a batman group or group of batman villains is fairly new like this was this was first hatched by uh, scott snyder and uh, greg capullo in like the new 52 arc like they, they that's where that's where they crafted these characters and then it's like you know finally uh out of the you know years and years that batman has been around they're like oh what's the what's the natural predator for a bat no not a joker not a not 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 a, not a guy with uh with makeup on his face it's an owl like owls kill bats and finally they brought that into it so that was a great part about it and the fact that you know they they could very well be using it in uh, the next batman movie makes a lot of sense and i think it's a really good idea yeah, I absolutely love the idea. But my my concern is that you're if you go into it right away in a second, I almost feel like playing the long game and play like 
I, I, I know they haven't said it, but I kind of hope they've planned a trilogy. I think he kind of meant Matt Reeves kind of mentioned he might have planned a trilogy. I kind of hope that you would save that for the end. Like that would be like the final conclusion to it all would be them. There would be the grand, the, the taskmaster, if you, master, if you will, of this whole thing. They would be the kind of ones, pull, you know, Riddler was pulling the strings in part one, but really the Court of Owls were pulling the strings the whole way along. I kind of would like it to play out in that respect that it would end with the Court of Owls. Do you, so, because because if you do them in the second one, where do you go with the third one? Is it just full chaos and bedlam, which we're kind of getting in part two anyway, because of of the state of Gotham? Well, I hope it's not the Taskmaster at all, because I don't want the to be the 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 uh, Court of Owls uh, masks come off, and then they're all like women with like big uh, mu- muscle suits uh, underneath it all the whole time. Uh, and they're not, uh, not fulfilled to what they are, but you know, that's, that's whatever. That's a, that's, that's a different uh, uh, part about it all altogether. That's a, that's my black widow uh, rant about the way they used the ta- taskmaster in that movie. But regardless, um, yeah, I, they could very well build up to it because again, like, you know, we, they were very small pieces in the, in the first movie and you could easily like, you know, uh, just ha- you have them as building blocks, and there's there's Lex still uh, uh, chiming in on this whole situation. Uh, but yeah, you could really like you know start setting up the building blocks even more in in a second one, and build up to in the third one as well. I, I I think either way, whichever way we're looking at it, I do think that we are looking at the Court of Owls being in these one of these next two movies. Uh, maybe the third one's the, the the best choice to go with. Maybe it's the second one. Maybe they go right into it because the worst thing that uh, I think the Batman would want to do is build, uh, build ahead too far without thinking about uh, making a great Batman, the Batman two. So I would hope that he's just not looking, looking at court of owls in the third one. And that sacrifices the Batman to, to a certain extent. So I think uh, either way, you know, work to making the best Batman two as you can. And whether that includes the court of owls in Batman two or whether that includes in the Batman three, um, that's fine. Just, you know, let, let, let's come out, uh, come out uh, the gate uh, still strong with the second one, because, you know, a little movie called the green lantern uh, tried to set up the stage uh, ahead way too far with that one. They're like, Oh no. Yeah. We'll get to Sinestro in the, in the, in the next one yet. Uh, you know, we know how the green lantern turned out. I, what could, what could the court of owls bring to the Matt Reeves Batman? Because the, the Riddler kind of uses brute, like is kind of a reflection of Batman, right? He's a reflection, reflection of what Batman is. So how, what, what could Matt Reeves use the court of out? Like what would they gain? What would the filmmakers gain from using the court of owls that other than just, Oh, it's cool. Well, I think uh, you can gain a lot of things. Like the, part of the reason why the court of owls like exists is that it's a very old, like, you know, part of, gotham city like it's been around for a while and you know just people necessarily don't really know about it right and you had a first batman movie that uh really tried to uh question what the history of the waynes is right like what what the background like you know were were were, was thomas wayne a good person and at the same time you kind of put in this Easter egg of Martha Wayne and her, her possibly having a unstable past in some type of ways. Right. So Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going back and you're thinking court of owls is this old function within Gotham city, I think you can use it as a way of uh, answering more questions about the Waynes, because I think when we had this spoiler discussion about the Batman, uh, Andrew really talked about how, you know, he doesn't think that, uh, the mystery of the Waynes is quite done yet. Right. And he thinks that uh-huh. there could still be a very like uh checkered past in the background, maybe not necessarily with Thomas Wayne, but definitely with Martha Wayne and possibly maybe even beyond that with uh, Bruce's grandparents or great grandparents and so forth. Right. Um, so I think you can make it very personal, very easily by delving into the history of the Waynes and answering some of those questions. I just hope that they, you know, Maybe they shouldn't get too involved in that, because also you want to make this movie about Bruce. And I mean, the way the way the Batman ends really points to starting to define a proper Bruce Bruce Wayne character, and that's something I really hope they do in the next one. Yeah, and that's why I think maybe the third movie might be where you put the Court of Owls, where you have a fully formed Batman going up against him, and the next movie is another stepping stone to get to that. 
But you hint at you you add a little bit more hints to the Court of Owls than you did in the first one. You kind of you really hint at it. And I love yeah. the idea of Court of Owls. I'm all for them being in it. I think they're fascinating. I think it's great. And it adds a lot of lore, right? We when you watch Batman movies, you don't get too much lore, I find, with the character and stuff. I mean, the, the Christopher Nolan ones are great enough, but uh, the lore doesn't the Dark Knight Rises really kind of brings out more with the Lazarus pit and stuff, but they're, they're, you know, it's just basically like, it's Gotham. It's uh, corrupt. Here's the Joker. I kind of like the idea that, Oh, th- Gotham has been like this for a long time. What's going on. There's something operating beneath the city. That's even deeper than we initially thought. But I think to get there, I think you do. I think you need one more stepping stone to get there. I think you lay it out a lot heavier in this one. I think even maybe you, you bring them into it in a capacity. You name drop them at least. Because mm-hmm. I think one thing they need to do if they are doing a third one is they need to get a whole vote of confidence and they need to see like you're doing a third one and then really lean into, like make this an isolated story and all that, but really lean in, into the third one being a thing. Like really like acknowledging that there will be a next one and the next one is going to be about X. Court of Owls yeah. being X. Yeah, and you could be right about that because, like, you know, the thing that they haven't defined on, they've only name dropped a couple names here and there, is that it's like, you know, Gotham City in a lot of uh, in, in, uh, moments is not just about the Waynes. Like, they're not the they're not the only like you know um, uh, wealthy family within Gotham City. They're not like you know the first family. Yeah. There's also the um, uh, oh shoot, I was gonna say Merlins, but no, the. Uh, um <laughs> that merlin's that's uh green arrow in, involved in the green arrow universe <laughs> uh but no the um uh whatever hush's last name is i forgot uh, tommy elliot oh, the Elliots, yeah, yeah, yeah the elliot's like um so easily if you wanted to set up with uh, having um the court of owls in the third one uh let's just say maybe the second one is about hush right and the second one's about Hush, and then you start developing all these other big families, like, you know, big important people within Gotham City that aren't criminals, that are that are the wealthy, that are so forth, right? And that's where you could start broadening it all, because then you could start really uh, jumping into the... Uh, uh, the history of Gotham City a little bit more than past past just Thomas and Martha Wayne beyond that when into the grandparents and the great grandparents and so forth. So um, yeah, may, maybe the hush could hush could be a more better second uh, second movie villain. And as long as you develop that movie very well, and I think you can with a villain like Hush, then you can ultimately you know set up yourself perfectly for the Court of Owls for the third movie. No, that's a great point. And I think Hush is someone that's not ashamed to name drop Hush at all, even though they didn't yep. technically name drop the character, they name dropped the character. So yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I think and that's one thing I think the Batman did better than any other Batman movie we got right off the get-go, like I just said, though, was establishing this lore and uh, and and placing little tidbits here and there where they can like a like a seed and let it grow, and then you can be like, Oh yeah, but remember that first movie we mentioned that, and now this is and I love that they did that. And I thought it was a really smart way to do it. I think Court of Owls is great. It's something that we haven't seen in a movie before, especially not a Batman movie. It would totally change the complexity of it. It would, and but it, but I still think it's got to be a fully formed Bruce Wayne slash Batman to go up against something like the Court of Owls. If it is a second movie, he's got to lose, I think, because he's not ready for it. And I think he needs an obstacle in the second one that can propel him to the third one to face. Gotham's greatest foe. I guess you could call him Gotham's greatest foe. Gotham's what a psychiatrist, the strangler of them, the one who's causing all of the issues within it. So that, that's where I stand on Court of Owls. Um, if you disagree, get your own YouTube channel. <laughs> no, and I think something that you and I have been <laughs> so I think something that you and I have been talking about quite a bit is that you know we would like to see a Robin into it quite a while. Uh, Absolutely, again, yeah. Again, at yeah. some point. So if you are doing Court of Owls in the third one, it possibly gives you the opportunity of also maybe introducing Robin within this second movie. Maybe, maybe that's a little bit too early, but regardless, I think having uh, a character like Robin in the story when you finally decide to tell a story of the Court of Owls would help a lot as well. I think if you're not going to, if you're going to bring Robin into this, uh, version you need mm-hmm. to do it in the second one you don't wait christopher nolan waited but that I, that's fair he wasn't right he was robin but he was i like the way they did i really actually like the way they did robin in that trilogy i, I thought that was cool 
because he wasn't until the end he wasn't robin but he acted as robin that's what i liked about it it made sense for the christopher nolan batman but i think if you're gonna actually bring robin in you gotta do it now you gotta do it in the second movie don't wait any longer don't just throw him in at the last minute you yeah he needs to have a story a character arc a story arc robin needs to be a part of it and if there's no place for that then you don't add robin to these stories at all because you just don't want to i love your dog in the background you don't just redo he's re- he's very uh vocal maybe maybe when yeah. we're moving on to our next topic i'll let him maybe in and he can uh... maybe you should have named him robin i know i know <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to a right. superman villain right <laughs> yeah, sir, sir, sir. yeah now you were all about that name uh, anyway, after I stand Court of Owls, I think it's a great idea. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. I, I really want to see it. I know you're a big Court of Owls fan, so it's going to be good. Let's move on to our, our second topic, our final topic of the day. Uh, Joker 2. Can't get enough Joker 2. Uh, I really like Joker 1. I thought it was a great movie. I also thought it was a one-off. I didn't think that there was going to be room for a sequel. I didn't think there was an, a need for a sequel. I thought the story was pretty self-contained, and it was great. But it did leave the door open, I suppose, in many ways. There's a lot of people who have different opinions of what actually went on within that movie, if it was in his mind, if it wasn't, blah, 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 all these other things. But now last week we heard that Lady Gaga might actually be playing Harley Quinn. And I got to read you this article from the Hashtag Show from Professor Hulk, uh, Nick Santos over at the Hashtag Show. These are new details, Rob. I don't know if you had a chance to read this article yet, so I'm just going to say it to you right now. Go for Um, it. Um, it is called uh, Joker Folie et Deux, right? That's the name of, of the movie, which is, of course, Madness for Two is the name for that, which makes sense when you think of Harley Quinn being in this. However, it goes beyond Harley Quinn, which is it's, it's getting actually fascinating and a little bit more into Batman lore, which I'm really digging right now. So Lady Gaga is the choice for the role of Harley Quinn. That is what uh, Nick Santos is saying over at the Hashtag Show. Uh, But he's exclusively learned through trusted sources that the title of the film uh, will have multiple meanings and interpretations. The first is the inclusion of Harley Quinn. And the second will be an exploration of the relationship between Joker and what was described to him as a very proto-Batman. From what he's been told, the version of Bruce Wayne Batman will not wear the cape and cowl and instead will be in street clothes, more or less. It will also be a younger version of Bruce Wayne that we've expected. Joker had a young Bruce Wayne, but this film is set farther in the future. It's still the young version of Bruce Wayne that hasn't quite become Batman yet. The film will also explore Bruce's psyche and explore the notion that while Joker is considered insane, so is Bruce. This will also explore the fallout from the ending of Joker a lot more. More details will undoubtedly be coming soon, but then we'll keep. Uh, but until then, we'll keep you updated on this story as the story develops. I can't read. So, what do you think? Anyway, Rob, what do you think about what I just said? If you could understand a word I just said. Oh, I fully understood it. All I'm thinking right now is that uh, Christian Bale might be fine trying to find out a way where he could. Uh, you know, de-age himself and make himself yeah. young Bruce Wayne, because that sounds exactly like something that, that what he wanted to do in the dark night, because uh, I've read that a few times with his interviews, how he wanted to do a, like a more deranged Batman going into it, because the more you act as the Batman, the more loner you become, the more dark and a little bit, you know, um, um, psychotic a man may become as well, because yeah, Bruce Christian Bale has talked about that a little bit too. And, you know, um, the one ever since we found out about this movie officially coming and uh, uh, Todd Phillips and uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix officially like uh, coming, coming back uh, to be a part of this movie uh, and, and also uh, showing that the title is fully ado, right? A madness for two, or, you know, r- roughly that translation translation, right? People were thinking, it's like, Oh, does that mean it's another Joker? Does that mean a Harley Quinn's coming into it? Or also one was the fact that, you know, a madness for two, um, the other side of the coin, the Batman, right? Batman being involved in this as well. So, uh, yeah, like, uh, I'm also, you know, although I'm interested in what, uh, this could all look like i'm also kind of wondering it's like hey how many how many versions of batman slash bruce wayne are are we gonna have on screen in a movie (laughs) over the next multiple years because it's like you know we're already getting affleck we're already getting uh patents and we're getting keaton coming back we're getting uh the, the keanu reeves batman in the super pets movie and all this stuff and now we might be getting this version of it um 
yeah, like, am I down for seeing it all? Sure, why not? Like, you know, I, I love uh, Todd Phillips' Joker. And, you know, even though I'm still a little per- perplexed about how this movie is going to be a musical, um, is a little, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure about how that's going to go for also a director that has never done a musical before. Um, so, uh, yeah. Am I interested in seeing it? Absolutely. Do I have hopes that it will be as good as Joker or even as good as the Batman? Uh, not so much, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm curious if this uh, rumor becomes true because, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they, they obviously at the end of the, at the end of Joker set up for a version of Batman coming into this if they wanted to. Yeah, exactly. I think, I, I think it makes sense. You're right though, because there are too many Batmans going on. Is there too much happening? Are people going to be, is it, Batman desaturation at this point. I know DC loves Batman. I think I think for this movie though, for the Joker character, it might make sense for Batman to play a part in it because they kind of, you know, they're the yin and the yang of each other. They kind of make sense for that to, to happen. Mm-hmm. So I can see that. I mean, I haven't read the script. Obviously, the musical part. I wonder if it's a musical, musical, or if there are musical numbers. That's the one thing I'm curious about. Like, how is it going to play in that respect? We'll find out, I suppose, when it happens. But the Academy Awards do love musicals, so look out. They might win another Oscar. You never know. I am fascinated to see it. I really like the first one. Lady Gaga is an interesting choice. Again, if it's a musical, it makes a lot more sense. Well, I guess whether or not it's a musical, it makes sense. Um, but the Batman aspect of it kind of, I, I was surprised because as much as I just said the Batman makes sense for it, I also thought that maybe they would leave Batman away. Like just less, less is more of that character. Mm-hmm. But again, now you have the Joker's mom is dead. You have Thomas Wayne is dead. You don't know the answer to Robert De Niro's dead. <laughs> Robert, that's what really matters. But you don't know. You're never going to get the <laughs> like Arthur Fleck is never going to get the answer to was Thomas Wayne his biological father, right? He'll never get that actual answer, and so that could be, uh, you know, so that could weigh on. I don't know if they're going to touch on that because they touched on it so heavily in the first one, but that could be a part of his psyche that plays into it too like we are the same you are me because we have the same blood in us we're both crazy because of like that could play into it as well I, and again because they're both gone we'll probably in these movies we probably will never get an answer that a, a genuine answer to that question see for me unlike you know when we were talking about uh the batman and whether um uh, Alfred was lying or whether, you know, Falcone was lying and all that type of stuff, right. About the, you know, genuine answer as to who killed the, the Waynes, uh, this one in Joker. I, I mean, for me, I kind of felt like I had it, my definitive answer because when they started becoming, t- telling you all the stuff about how, um, insane and how you know not not well his mother was and her delusions and stuff like that it really felt like to me like that uh they had to finally answer that where it's like she just made this whole thing up in her head that that's where he came from and that uh that's that's why it was um but at the same time you know even though i felt like that was the case the, either way they can easily play it up like um joker or you know arthur is not so convinced in this next movie and you know he he could easily start thinking that as well he could he could go back and see that little boy or you know if they aged up the boy like that they're saying in that article a bit that could make sense too um this could either easily either way whether we have the answer or we don't just you know because it's the joker he could easily just have those delusions of thinking that's the case much like his mother did yeah i I always assumed that she was lying like that was a story that she made up for herself also but i just within the movie though joker's never convinced i don't think that thomas wayne i'd have to rewatch i just watched a little while ago i didn't pay attention to that aspect of it but i think i don't think he's he believes like i think he's still kind of on the fence and he's not quite sure what i think he kind of knows that he's not his father but he doesn't fully believe that he's not his father so i think you could play into that because it doesn't matter what we know it matters what's in that character's mind and that character i mean you know it's a joker oh yeah and uh, i mean i always took it as that uh he at in those moments in the movie, he believed that she lied to him and that, that he wasn't really the kid. That, that's not who it was. And part of the reason why he wound up killing his own mother in that movie. Right. Um, but what uh, if he found out she was right? 
<laughs> then then he might uh, tr start rethinking everything, <laughs> all his decisions. But uh, I mean, you talked, you you mentioned Lady Gaga, and this was a part that I just wasn't sure about because you know, even though I liked Lady Gaga in A Star Is Born, um, ever since then she's kind of just worn out me a, a fair bit. I was interested in seeing House of Gucci a little bit last year until one, I started hearing about the reviews about it not being very good, and two started hearing and reading these interviews that lady gaga was giving and this like you know kind of pompous attitude when it came to her you know her 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 process as an artist right how she had to live as um i forget what uh, her character's name was miss gucci i forgot what her first name was uh, she had to live and breathe being her and all that type of stuff so i've definitely come off that little let lady gaga train a little bit there um and um you know she's she's pushing for an oscar right she didn't get her first stars born she didn't even get a nomination for house of gucci so i think she's trying to attach herself to this movie which will make a lot of money i'm sure like you know first one made a billion dollars only cost them something like 60 or 70 million dollars to make uh so maybe she's hoping that you know this joker folie a deux could finally be her oscar yeah, I mean, you see Joaquin Phoenix get you think, why can't I? I have, I don't really have a problem with her being cast, but she feels like the Hollywood casting. Like, it feels like Hollywood casting, right? The Hollywood elite is casting to me, and it just, I mean, I'm sure she'll be fine, and maybe even more than, maybe she'll be amazing. Maybe she'll be good. But, I'll be, I'll, yeah. I'll be open to it. But it, it, it just, it feels like, it feels lazy casting to me. It's like, oh yeah, Lady Gaga, like she makes it. Like, it, it's, I, I told this to Andrew Fantasia, I'm like, I kind of wish they got somebody I never heard of who blows the door off of everybody. Like was able to like one up Joaquin Phoenix. And then you're like, wow, that was a stand up performance. I guess. The, the, I mean, the other side of that coin is you get somebody who you think is that, and they end up sucking. So, so maybe you don't want to take that chance, but that's how I, I wish they got somebody I never heard of who then blows the door off of it and becomes like a Margot Robbie and Wolf of Wall Street. Right. And then just all of a sudden that's, there's a star is born. Yeah, even though Margot, I don't know if she could sing or not. I, I would kind of just be interested in seeing her. <laughs> in I this movie. So would I, but I think that was that's when you really get confusing, and I think they yes. want to separate that from everything. I, and again, I wish she's a heavyweight. I wish she could act opposite Joaquin Phoenix for these things. And stop drinking before the show, Rob. You're I know, right? Him. I'm I'm sucking these Montelliers down like uh like Mont water. <laughs> exactly like water. All right, before we wrap up, I want to know your thoughts. On season four, season four, Stranger Things. Uh, I love it quite a bit. I was actually in the middle of a rewatch. I've been rewatching it since the beginning, and I'm actually in on season four now. So I'm going over back, uh, back over the episodes again. Um, I think personally, uh, this is the best uh, Stranger Things has ever been. It's really good. I mean, uh, having such like uh, intimidating presence that you can use constantly in Vecna as the villain is uh, very, very effective. And uh, that fourth episode still is probably one of my favorite Stranger Things episodes altogether. And I'm uh, very much looking forward to it. I mean, we're, uh, what, a week and a half away now from uh, uh, oh, yeah. part two of season uh, four coming out. It feels like July is so far away, but I guess it took me so long to watch it. I, I, I'm I'm going to hold my thoughts on the season as a whole until I finish it, obviously. Sure. Um, right right now, I think for me, I think season three has been the strongest. I haven't watched it all in a row, but I really remember loving season three. This season I really like, but part of the problem it, for me has been like the Hopper storyline kind of feels like I'm kind of like, are we just doing that to get them back to Hawkins? I also don't like the way he survived. I thought he was going to end up in the upside down. And then he's just like, no, nah, I ducked. I'm like what? Um, but I feel like if that storyline was just to get him back to Hawkins, it kind of feels like, eh, did we even like, there's little things I feel like they didn't really need, but, but the problem with strange, stranger things, biggest flaw is its biggest strength. It is probably the best show at creating new characters that are awesome. And then the problem is then you've got new characters who are awesome. And unless you kill them off, they are going to be in the next season. So now you've got 900 characters and that is the biggest it, it, they, they're so good at it because every time I'm like, oh god, another new character, and I'm like, damn, I really like that new character. And then, it, but now it's like there's so many characters that even Millie Bobby Brown in an interview said there's two, there you know maybe there's too many. So I, I think some we might be losing some in the next two episodes, and I think we're definitely going to lose more in season five, which is the last season anyway. So whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to the newer characters, I mean, 
I, Eddie, Eddie, I love completely. So good. He's great. Yeah, That's he's a great character. Uh, Argyle's like you know a fun like so comedy yeah. character to have over there and stuff like that. The one that like especially going over it, and I never, I didn't like him the first go round, but the actor is very good playing it. Is the jock right? The jock. Yeah, my least favorite part. Yeah, my least favorite too. Yeah, so I, I, I don't like, I don't like the role, like and all that type of stuff. Part, parts of it, He'll, but the actor's yeah. really good in the role. He, he is good. I didn't like that character, but that character also just, <laughs> this character just disappears. He does like they what they need him to do, and then vanishes for like two episodes. Also, the other thing that I found funny, I think I might have said this on yesterday's show, so I apologize. Is Max? They like they build up Max, and she's like the main character, and then all of a sudden. She's like, they're like, go in that room for the next two episodes. You're like, what just happened to Max? Oh my gosh, she's yeah. in that room still. Like, they've been, they've, that, that's a yeah, long time. still coming after her, right? Yeah, I know. She gotta keep re, she yeah. got to keep replaying Kate Bush. Yeah. Otherwise, she's oh, going to die. Kate Bush's pockets were like Scrooge McDuck's vault that by the end. Yeah. Like, that's crazy right now. No, I'm very much, I really, I really like that show a lot. Uh, it's a lot. I look for, I actually want to go back and watch season one because I want to see, well, you might be able to answer this without me having to do all that. But because I really thought the vec spoilers if you haven't seen it, I guess. But I mean, this is Super Tuesday. You're here for superheroes, and you've left anyway. I really like the way Vecna. I like the way they worked Vecna into the overall lore and plot of Stranger Things as a whole. Does it make sense when you rewatch it? Uh, it did because the biggest one I wanted to rewatch it for to see if it made sense because when they started introducing all the kids here in season four again, like you know, yeah. uh, two, three, and four, and all that type of stuff, I eight started thinking it's like eight was nowhere. Yeah, exactly. That's part of it. And also, eight's powers are way different than the other ones, right? Like yeah. you know, some some of the characters was like there was that one kid who could see the cards right on the yeah, other yeah. side, so some type of foresight power. And so I was wondering about eight, how it's like, how does this all make sense? But it actually does still make sense because when you go back over, over it, it reveals that she actually left when she was like a small little kid and stuff like that. So she would have been gone before all these flashbacks. She, so she escaped well before this point. And Vecna makes sense. Uh, Vecna, as far as I know, like uh, th they don't really name drop any of the other. Um, no, no. And, uh, or, no, but like in the upside down, though, like does everything? I just want to see if everything makes sense. Like if oh, in the upside yeah. down. Well, I, I I think there's still a lot of question marks up the, about the upside down in general, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, uh, I uh, I I was kind of wondering, or it's like, oh, did did uh, Eleven create the upside down by launching yeah, yeah. Vecta into it? I still think no. I still yeah, think yeah. the upside down was there, and she that, just you know, unleashed a demon in there. Yeah, unleashed a demon in there to start transforming everything like that um the 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 um new uh revelation that they came up with in this season how when uh uh the teenagers went over there when when um uh, nancy and steve went over there and realized that the upside down is kind of frozen in 1983 mm -hmm. or whatnot right on the day that will will uh escaped is interesting to me um i mean i start thinking about whether you know will's abduction going to the upside down really affected like you know construct the upside down in some type of way but at the same time you know I, I i also think you know we we still haven't found out how that first demogorgon got through well that's that, still, anyway we should do it just essentially maybe that's simultaneous with with vecna going through maybe that when vecna went through the demogorgon came out see i'm not convinced that that happened at the same time because especially okay. watching it from the beginning, like season one, the uh, the flashback uh, eleven that we got in season four, that looks like she's even younger than she was in season one, right? That still looks that looks to me like she's like uh, that's like maybe even a year before that. Well, I was just throwing Possibly. it out there. All right, yeah, no, that's no, the no, end sorry. of it. We'll do a Stranger Things episode one day. We should, we should, because it's a great yeah. After it's all done, done, I think we should. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Rob, where can everybody find you at? You can find me at Robert E. McDonald uh, on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And also just uh, jump on the letterbox and stuff like that. If you want to find me there, it's uh, at, at Nightwing with a six instead of a G. Uh, yeah, I, do, I, I don't know. I, I haven't done any list recently, but, you know, you can you can see my ratings and just, and uh, hear, hear a little bit of what I had to say about Lightyear, because that's another new movie that came out that I was. Oh, uh, I'm going to check that out. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a. It's an issue movie. I was expecting more from it, but I uh, it, it a little bit underperformed for me. 
Pixar. Everybody's in love with Pixar. All right, everybody, let us know your thoughts on all the top comments on all the topics on the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.